Hello and welcome to the Dutchin channel. It's Thursday the 4th of April 2024, approaching 5 to 9 in the evening and we've finished the racing for the day and we've been betting at Lingfield, Southall and Wolverhampton because Warwick was abandoned and I was going to do Cromwell and then that got abandoned. So just the three main meetings we've covered today. And as you can see already, we've made another loss. So we got back in it yesterday by a win, and now we've lost today £121.50, which is better than what the first day's losses were. A bit frustrating today. But we'll just go down and show you what the total loss is for the four days. So we're now losing £549.43. But I do now put this out. If you were betting in £1 in four days, you would be losing £11, basically. So 11 bets of whatever you would stake would have been lost. So I don't call it massively bad. I'd have worse, of course, before this. But sometimes you can have that month like we did last month where we only had four losses and then towards the end we had two losses on the last day. So you could say at the moment that I've only won one in the last six. But if you want to go back further than that, I'd won the previous five. So we can all draw lines where we want to draw them. But you could say that we've won six and lost six out of the last 12. But we're only doing it from the start of the month again. So now we're £550 down, basically, or 11 states of whatever you are doing. Also, on the Naps table today, we went with Galway Marla. The, I don't know, the first two miles or whatever, run a really solid race, jumping well. Then he just flattened out. Went to the back of the field, went further backwards and then got pulled up. I can't explain it. They couldn't explain it on Sky either. So a disappointing nap all round that was. So it's not been a, well, it's not been good for a while. And I can only hope that it does change round. I mean, I'm used to these kind of losses. But I'd rather see them in the middle of the month or at least got in front somewhere before I fall behind. That's what I like to do, but it doesn't go the way you want it to sometimes. So into the fourth there, you can see what happened today at Lingfield. Surprisingly enough, at Lingfield, we ended up with a £32 profit. And the killer was Southern. We just had one win and three losses. So it was a straight easy one to work out there. So we lost £100 at Southern. And Wolverhampton, you know, I think I was really unlucky there, really. I lost 53.50. When you break the, the losses down today, it's not so bad. But we'll go through everything anyway and we'll look at our meetings and then we'll take it from there so we'll start off with Lingfield in the first race the 150 Jungle Charm, big price, went off at 16.39. We had that one, so I was happy with that. We had the second and third. If you can see, we've taken four selections in that race. Then there was a no race in the 220. Then we moved into the 250. And I thought, well, I've had a good start. Let's see what happens now. And then Satwa, top weight, Holly Doyle from the front. Never looked in danger, just went away. So that was the end of that. No one came out of the pack, really, to challenge. They better get too much of a lead. 
So now we're, we're showing up 1-1. One, one. And then Descondado came through and won the next. And I'm looking for any of mine to come out of the pack. Maybe a third and a fourth there, but again, the first, the second, I'm nowhere near it. Then in the 350, I needed a win here to come back to level. And I got it with Star of Lady M. Left it very late. I thought the Defiant was going to beat everybody. But the Defiant went off at 31.1. And Star of Lady M just come up the rails and, and beat him. So thank God for that. And that brought me back to 2-2. Then there was no bet in the 425. And then in the last race, Sir Alex Ferguson had rode to Wembley. And they hammered it, really. I mean, this was 2.22 at the start of the day when I gave it. Ends up 164. So, of course, it's our only bet. But we had it, and that gave us a, a bit of a lift there as Lingfield was going to be our only winning, winning meeting of the afternoon. And then we look into Southall. This is where we lost three and had one winner. The first race was our nap here. But it drifted right the way out to 2.33. I don't really know what happened there. And only four run a race and Rostello come through and won it. But the ground was terrible. But he never looked like getting caught. So that was one down there. And then, of course, it's a three-horse race in the next. But I managed to find the winner here that went off at 5.22. I'm surprised, really, it, it didn't go off as favourite instead of the outsider. I couldn't work it out. And then we didn't have a bet in the 305. Then the 335 was also a no betting race. So again, we were level there at the moment with one winner and one loser. Then Innis Free Lad never looked like getting beaten. And again, I didn't have the second. And it was quite frustrating again to, to keep this losing run up. And then in our last betting race at a quarter to five, I'm thinking to myself, I've got to get one of these. They were all up there. They all went short prices at one point. And then Uno Musk decided to come through at 16.4 and ruined the day for everybody. But as luck had it, I didn't have the second either. So it's just poor selections. I don't even know what I can blame it on at the moment. You have a, a really, really good month and then it plummets. And there just isn't a reason for it. The only reason I can see, but I don't ever take anything into consideration, is the weather is getting worse and worse, and whether horses don't travel on the ground, the ones I do, but I don't use that as an excuse. I don't even put that in calculations. So let's go into the third meeting, because obviously the third one up there is Warwick that was abandoned. Maybe that would have made a difference for me if that went ahead today, but we don't know. And then we started off tonight in the first at Wolverhampton. And another outsider comes through and wins 17.3, Casa Luna. All right, I've got it in fourth. The only way I would have done that is if these two first price horses were going to be a lot bigger than that. But the only way I could have got it is if the favourite ran. The favourite was taken out as they were going in the stalls. And of course, if it, if it had a ran, it hadn't a won, I would have got the win there. But again, that's just, that's just life. Then in the second race at Wolverhampton, I'm thinking, now, come on, let's get back now, get back the levels. And Bear Claws, this was another horse that I couldn't have backed. I did scrape the second in, which to be honest, as as I said on Sky, I sort of blamed the young girl that was on it because she was only like a, a claimer and everything else. But to be honest, I don't put the blame on any jockey. 
I know sometimes you can say, oh, they, they shouldn't have been on the rails, they shouldn't have been boxed in. But if the horse is good enough, it will get itself away and power home. And obviously it wasn't good enough. And then the next race, another another horse that went off odds on. Uh, but Julie won like an odds on favourite should have done. So I bought that one back in. I thought, oh, one, two now. And then at half past six, we had no bet. Then we had a race at seven o'clock. Woodstock, I've given that the finish second to last. No good. But I did have the second bell shot. But the winner was away and gone. So it's never going to stop that one, will it? Then in the 7.30, I was lucky here because in the morning, most of these prices were reversed the other way around. I mean, Koji opened 9 to 4, and you can see what it's gone out to. So all these prices just turned on its head from the morning market. So I ended up with forever a diamond that came through and won, and that was 8.03. So I managed to get that, and then in the 8 o'clock, I did fancy snooze lane, top selection there, 5.35, that came through and won, which I was happy about, but if Graffiti hadn't had a bad start, maybe that would have chinned it. So now I thought to myself, come on, let's just get one more win in the last, that will bring me to about £20 down, which would have been a, a lot better looking at it. And the full force one here, Meng Tian, locked and loaded, was supposed to win today. Should have done better than it did, to be honest. But Meng Tian came through. And this morning, if you looked at the matchbook exchange, I actually had enough in that liquidity-wise to back it. But because they came for this locked and loaded, went down to 2.40, anything under that, I was never going to be betting on the day. So it was disappointing, really. That's that's most probably all I can say about today. You know, it will pick up, but I just don't like the start of it. I mean, I'm 11 points down if you were doing the same system, following everything. That's what you'd be down. So it's not the end of the world, because if you watch that tutorial video that I did, about your 20 stakes yeah when you lost 20 stakes then you change your stake instead of i'm doing 50 pounds a race then i will drop it to 40 i think it was 45 pound a race so i will then be fighting to win the next 20 to get back to do my 50 stakes again because when you're out of form you have to drop your stake, and and that's something you have to do. Don't increase it, because if you're not playing very well, then you're just going to lose the higher stake on top of the stake you've already done, and before you know it, you'll have no bank left. So you have to go the other way around. And if you are good enough at what you do, then you will increase again. But you need to have 20 winners more than you have losers to increase again. And this is the same now. Until I hit 20 losers more than I've had winners, and I'm on minus 11 at the moment, then until that reaches 20, I still fight on at 50 every win. Because there's no reason why I shouldn't turn it round. You just need a little bit of more luck going with you. Sometimes I look back and I think to myself, you know, when I looked at the selections today, some of these at the top there I'm looking at are favourites. You know, so it's not as if I'm back in all outsiders and people are saying to me, oh, you, you know, you're not going to win by doing those horses. Let's just have a, a quick look into the results. You know, we'll start with Linkfit. Uh, all right, I had the first one, but it's returned at 11 to 1. Then our next race that we bet in, this is returned at 9 to 1. Then the race after that is 5 to 1. Star of Lady M was 3 to 1, which I had anyway. And then in the last race, we got an 8 to 13. So for the whole meeting I did at Lingfield, 
and made a profit, there was only one favourite that won. Uh, so if it would have been a card that just had two favourites on it or something, I, I would have made a profit even more there. Then we went to Subal. The first race was 9-2 to two with a four-runner race. Then after that, I had that one, which was 130. Then we didn't bet in the no, we didn't have a bet in that Astron flat race or that maiden hurdle. So we work our way down again. In this free last work wins at two to one. Uno Mass wins at twelve to one. So there's no favourites at Subtle. So as I like to say to people, don't tell me that you could have had a great day because someone at some point will put a favourite in. And that Wolverhampton first race, 18 to 1. Yeah, I do get them, but you don't get every one. Bear Claws, 13 to 2. Then you get a favourite, but it's 10 to 11. It's not like 4 to 1 where you can back other ones in case it loses. And then we get towards the end of the night. Woodstock, 4 to 1. Forever a Diamond, all right, I had that at 6-1. to one. And Snooze Lane, 4-1 to one joint favourite. I had that one. And then the last, 6-1. to one. So if you was to tell me that you want to put level stakes on favourites, what have you had today? Two favourites again? This is why it's most probably costing me, because I'm not a favourite backer. I do whatever my system tells me to do. But at some point, you should be getting a better return for the favourites. Yeah, what have we seen there now since I've been going through it? Three? The Alex Ferguson horse wrote to Wembley, that one. There was a joint favourite of Snooze Lane. And the other one was this 10 to 11 shot Aces Wild. So, you know, out of three meetings, we got three favourites and two a rod's on, no one's going to make money. The only people that may make money are people that want to do each way bets. You know, each way lucky 15s. So I can see myself just unlucky. When it turns round, I, I will profit. I will get all that losing money back. Uh, I'm confident in my system. But you know, like everything else, we have to get losers to get winners. So we just need that little bit of change of luck. Tomorrow, I'm going down the route here. Oh, let's, let's have a look. Let's just go into the race cards. And of course, after I've done this video, I will do one of what racing we're going to cover tomorrow. So the first race in tomorrow is going to be at Fontwell. We've got Lingfield again on the all-weather. We've got not a great meeting at Musselboro, but lots of runners. And that's all I'm going to cover tomorrow. All right. I was going to do Dundalk, but the races we're going to be betting in there will all have 14 runners in, plus all the reserves. And to be honest, I just want to stick to the UK race. And I, just, I did add a few Irish in going back a while ago, but I'm just going to stick to these UK ones for a moment. So Frontwell, Lingfield and Musselburgh, the only way I mostly do Dundalk is if I wake up in the morning and see one of those meetings has been abandoned. But other than that, yeah, it, it hasn't started very well this month, but I'm confident of a turnaround. So we'll see how we get on tomorrow. I'll put that video on after this, but thanks for watching and leave your comments or whatever you've got to tell me. And we'll catch up tomorrow. So happy punting.